At TJ Maxx, you can go above and beyond and stay under budget. Find the gifts they love for less and gift to the max. You know that feeling of having to rewash dishes that didn't get clean? I don't. Cascade Platinum Plus with double the Dawn grease fighting power and double the scrubbing power for a no rewash clean and a cabinet ready shine. Upgrade to Cascade Platinum Plus. Dare to dish differently. Tomorrow on ET, we're with Oprah and the cast of The Color Purple for their big LA premiere. Ooh, I cannot wait to see this movie mm -hmm. tonight. I'm going to be right there. Okay, we leave you now with your happening now. The Bear County Sheriff and DA both speaking out today about a violent crime spree up I-35 that included two deaths right here in Bear County. You just saw the cameras. We have the very latest coming right up. KSAT community in the Children's Shelter of San Antonio waiting for your call. Coming up, we're going to tell you the many ways you can help our city's foster children by dialing in. Some ups and downs to talk about as our next cold front is on the horizon. I'll let you know when it arrives and what changes are going to happen in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. If you live in that neighborhood, please uh, make it a point to check your doorbell camera video. Did you see this car on a doorbell camera? Did you hear what you thought may have been gunshots? If what you feel is just a puzzle piece that's this big, it may be just that one puzzle piece that we need to break this case wide open for us. First at five, six people dead across two cities and now a plea to help solve this multi murder case at the center of the investigation. 34 year old Shane James Jr. A man from East Fair County who is now in jail in Austin for capital murder. We've been tracking updates all day long, have team coverage of what we've learned since first reporting this brutal crime spree and the Bear County connection last night on the night beat. And in just the last couple of hours, we've learned a lot more kicking off our coverage tonight. R.J. Marquez, who in the last hour or so got many new details from the Bear County Sheriff. R.J., Shane James, he was on the radar of the Bear County Sheriff's Office before all these murders. Yeah, that's right, Ursula. Steve, this was someone that had interacted with deputies in the past, and he had multiple warrants out for his arrest and also had a previous arrest here in Bear County for an incident that was a misdemeanor assault. It was during a domestic violence incident. The sheriff gave us details on all of that. We'll hear from him in just a bit. But first, we also learned the names of the victims in this horrendous double murder in Northeast Bear County. They are 55-year-old Phyllis James and 56-year-old Shane M. James. The sheriff confirming today they are the parents of the suspect. Their bodies were found last night at a home in the 6000 block of Port Royal. Sheriff Salazar said the last contact that anyone had with the parents was at 10 p.m. on December 4th, the night before their murder. A neighbor called then looking for the parents around 6 p.m. yesterday and then called deputies and then that's when they made that gruesome discovery at the home. But this was not the first time that deputies had been to the house. In fact, the sheriff said deputies arrested James back in January of 2022. Here's more from the sheriff. January 6th of 2022, he was arrested uh, there in the 6,000 block of Port Royal for three misdemeanor charges of, of assault. Uh, we believe that the victims of those assaults at that time were the two decedents, the two victims that were deceased, and then a sibling. Uh, he was arrested on that day on January 6th, 2022 by deputies from the Bear County Sheriff's Office. All right, now to add more to that timeline, Sheriff Sada said saying that James was released from jail in March after that January arrest, but cut off his ankle monitor a day later. But that was not a crime at the time. Sada said that deputies then went to the home again this past August while the suspect here, Mr. James, was having a mental health episode. He had those warrants out for his arrest, but deputies did not determine that he was an immediate threat and then left the home after trying de-escalation measures and then speaking to the parents. So a lot more new details that came out today from that press conference. And we're also learning more about how James was able to bond out early the earlier this year. Case that investigates Dylan Collier is live with that. And RJ, after his arrest on misdemeanor assault charges, James was bonded out by a member of the Texas Organizing Project, or TOP, an area group that is in favor of bail reform. The organization has also been an ardent supporter of Sheriff Javier Salazar and Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez, as well as many other Democratic politicians in Bear County. Campaign finance records show both Gonzalez and Salazar have received substantial support from TOP 
including tens of thousands of dollars in block walking services for past campaigns. Neither public official seemed inclined this afternoon to distance themselves from the group, however. There's no uh, money amount uh, that they donated to me, and so uh, and and I'm going to go forward with my uh, with my office uh, and and do the right thing because public safety is is our number one concern. Dylan, to answer your question, no, there's nothing for me to to uh, refund. Uh, again, they didn't do anything wrong in in helping this gentleman exercise his his right to bond. Um, so no, there, will, there won't be any, anything refunded and I don't regret anybody supporting me. James's booking records list the person who paid bond last year as Lakita Garcia. She is the statewide policy director for Top Garcia and other leaders from the organization did, did not respond to multiple emails from KSAT seeking comment for this story throughout the day. The organization has posted bonds for defendants in Bear County, including some of those charged with violent offenses. That practice over the past couple of years has received criticism in the past. Re reporting live outside the Bear County Jail, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Thank you so much, Dylan. We're going to continue to dig into this story. Meantime, there's other breaking news right now in Las Vegas, where there has been a shooting on the campus of the University of Nevada. Police saying they got a call about an active shooter late this afternoon near the business school. Right now, they say there are three victims at UNLV, but their conditions are not known. Tim Pulliam is following the developments. Right now, we know the suspect in the shooting is dead, and there are multiple victims, according to Las Vegas police. Investigators just provided this update. We do have one su suspect down. Of course, we have no idea on the uh, motive. Um, there are a number of victims that have been transported to area hospitals. The shooting took place at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas campus. The university says shots were reported at Beam Hall and the nearby student union. Listen to reaction from the scene. UNLV did a really good job giving us updates, telling us where the shooter was, getting us out quick. Police evacuated buildings during the search for the shooter. We expect to learn more on the victims and the suspect as this story develops. Tim Pulliam, ABC News, Los Angeles. And right now, police are stressing there is no longer a threat there, but that investigation is just beginning and that everyone around there needs to recognize the scene is very active. Back here at home, San Antonio police investiga investigating after they say a man stabbed his wife multiple times, killing her. According to police, the 54 year old man called 911 just before 11 last night, saying the two had gotten into an argument at their home in the 200 block of Channing Avenue on the southeast side. Police say the argument escalated quickly and the husband stabbed the wife multiple times. The name and age of the woman killed has not been released. Bear County Sheriff's Office trying to figure out what led to a two car crash that trapped the occupants in one car killing a passenger. According to the sheriff's office, the two cars were driving along Highway 90 near 211 just after midnight when they collided. One of the cars rolled into the center median, trapping three people inside. Two people were rescued from the car. The other person sadly died. No names of those involved in the crash have been released yet. She is still officially listed as missing. Tomorrow marks the 13th anniversary of a San Antonio great grandmother disappearing after leaving her job. Years after Pauline Diaz's disappearance, her family believes they are still being intimidated to stop looking for her. On December 7th of 2010, Diaz last seen leaving the HEB on I-37 in Southeast Military where she worked. Surveillance showed her speaking with a woman before she left to her estranged husband's home. Her truck found down the road, but Diaz was not. Pauline's family has been very vocal about not losing hope in finding out what happened to her. But over the weekend, Juanita Diaz, Pauline's daughter, says she thinks someone was trying to send a message when they showed up at her house and ripped a missing persons magnet like this one right off her truck. If you want this story to stop, then you need to give us our answers. And we will stop putting my mom out there. But until then, we are always going to speak for my mom until she is brought home, until we get our answers. Investigators have been contacted about the theft in case there's a link to the missing persons case. This is a picture from the video that night. Anyone with information urged to call San Antonio police.
Check out traffic right now. Let's go to I-10 in Callahan, and it looks like I-35 in North Loop 410. I-10 in Callahan looked like it was backed up 35 and 410 as well. I-35 in St. Mary is also very busy, a busy Wednesday afternoon on our roads. Uh, and you'll be busy with your uh, camera taking pictures of the sunset this evening. Sunset alert with the high thin clouds overhead. It's going to be beautiful and colorful now all the way through about 5 30, 5 40 p.m. We'll get some really good color out there. So snap your photos, send them into KSAC Connect through the Weather Authority app, and then we can share them on air all evening and even into tomorrow morning. We like to share those photos. Temperature wise, 46 this morning, 69 for the high temperature. That's 71 in Floresville and Pan Maria, 67 Leon Springs, Bernie at 66, and Lavernia at 69. Now we will see some low clouds start to develop later on tonight and early tomorrow. That's going to be some fog. We have some ups and downs with humidity and temperatures around our next cold front. We'll time that out for you and talk about the changes coming. Thank you, Adam. University Health Women's and Children's Center opening up for business and celebrating the birth of the first newborn at their new center. Parker Lee Spear born at 1259 yesterday afternoon. Eight pounds, 15 ounces, the first baby to be born on the first day the new hospital began serving patients. The Spear family is getting a baby gift package that you won't believe to celebrate the huge accomplishment. It includes a full tuition scholarship for Parker Lee at Texas A&M San Antonio. There's a family membership to the Botanical Gardens, a pack and play, a diaper bag, and a whole lot more done honestly we just we were just really hoping to have a healthy baby so this was a super big perk on top of all of that so this is really awesome the women and children's hospital serves as the new home for university health's level four NICU and level four maternity center I like what you said. We we're just hoping to have a healthy baby and they got it. Yeah, all the rest of this doesn't matter. All right. Our phone bank for the Children's Shelter of San Antonio accepting calls right now. We're speaking with the program director after the break about ways you can help. I'm Myra Arthur here in a very busy KSAT newsroom, and here's what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. Details of a deadly drive-by shooting that killed a four-year-old boy were front and center in the murder trial of Quentin Phillips. Phillips is one of three men charged in this case. We take you inside the courtroom for day one. Your power bill could be going up. The city council votes tomorrow on what could be the second CPS energy rate hike in two years. How much it could cost you and how some CPS customers plan to deal with that. And immigrants in abusive relationships are often terrified to ask for help because they're afraid they'll be deported. At 6 o'clock, a brave young mom tells us how going to the battered women and children's shelter saved her life. That and more coming your way today in less than an hour. We are raising awareness for the needs of the Children's Shelter of San Antonio. That's what this phone bank is all about today. Finding ways to help find foster families and donors who can sponsor children. 210-351-1363 is the number to call. And we are joined right now by Patrick Ortiz, yes. who's going to talk to us about the Children's Shelter and what kind of You've got a great number of volunteers who are answering the phones, but what kind of questions are you expecting today? We're expecting all kinds of questions, um, basically on on how they could how they could help our um, the shelter, how the community could help and help the shelter and meet a lot of the needs for our foster families, but also for our community in general that we serve. And um, that's what I'm here to speak about about some of the programs that we also have that serve the community in general. Yeah, and so you, it doesn't have to be just calling because you want to foster right it can be finding out different ways that people can help and exactly. some of the different programs that they have right at the children's shelter talk about compadre y compadre exactly thank you steve uh, compadre compadre is a fatherhood program it is a it's a commitment a fatherhood journey a 15-week journey that dads make and this is any male caregiver that father a child zero to 17 
They're welcome to come and take this free parenting resource that is available for them. Grandfathers, uncles, stepfathers, anyone is able to come and take these uh, free resources from the Compadre Compadre class um, sessions and stuff. So uh, these are great resources. We offer community help and we also um, offer case management, referrals, internal counseling. We try to give as much resource and help to uh, any father that comes and asks for this type of help. Yeah, and, and really this is a resource here, this phone bank, 210-351-1363. Obviously, money is much needed in all of these endeavors. Foster families are greatly needed in the state of Texas. But also, if you have a question about how you can help, there's no obligation. Right. Just call the number right now, 210-351-1363. You don't even have to give your name if you don't want to. Right. But they, We're going to be here until 7 o'clock tonight taking your calls, hopefully taking your donations, and maybe we'll find somebody that wants to foster a family today. How great would that be? be great. Ursula. Thank you so much. Take a look outside with live cam, and you're right, Adam. It's percolating into what could be a beautiful sunset. Oh, it's already taking shape and we already have one photo in from KSAC Connect, so we're glad to see that. Let's get to our headlines out there and actually let's just get to our time lapse. Let's do that before we do anything. I want to show you the nice setup here of this sunset. It's going to be beautiful. We're talking momentarily here within minutes. It's going to be spectacular and already we have one sun dog reported in Stone Oak. You know how we get those halos around the sun sometimes and we can even get them around the moon. Uh, we also get it's similar to this sun dog that you see right here on the right, left and sometimes top of that faint halo. You get these sun dogs and it's caused by the refraction or the bending of the light through the ice crystals high in the sky. Ice crystals being those cirrus clouds. Here's our visible satellite. You look closely, you see these wisps of white coming in from the southwest, moving to the northeast. Those are the thin cirrus clouds that are composed of all ice. And that's why when we have those, we can get those halos called a 22 degree halo and even the sun dogs like we're seeing out there right now. I always get a little excited when we have sunsets like this. It's good. But this brings us to our overall all pattern. Surface high pressure is now anchored over Arkansas. That's going to be sliding eastward as it does. So our wind here at the ground it's going to be coming off the Gulf of Mexico. It even started to this afternoon. This is going to continue to pump up the humidity and mugginess in the atmosphere, and you'll especially feel it by Friday and even on into Saturday morning. Then we get a cold front midday Saturday that sweeps it away. So notice the humidity still pleasant. You're not going to notice it too much tomorrow, but by Friday we're in the muggy category. That's going to last through Saturday morning. Then the cold front hips hits and gone. Say goodbye to that mugginess for Saturday afternoon, Sunday, and even Monday of next week. It will affect morning temperatures as well. That influx of humidity from the Gulf tomorrow morning, not quite as cool as past few mornings. For the most part, upper 40s around town, mid 40s in the hill country. That's warmer than the 30s we've been seeing in the hill country. 48 Lackland tomorrow morning, Stone Oak at sunrise 48. Lavernia and Converse 46, but with that added humidity in the air, mornings will get warmer. 60 degrees at sunrise on Friday. Saturday, we're looking at 65. I mean, that's basically our average high temperature these days, but that's going to be our morning reading. When you get that extra mugginess in the air, temperatures just can't fall. They physically can't fall that much at night. But then look what happens. We talked about the cold front arriving on Saturday midday. Sunday morning, up and out first thing in the morning, 39. By Monday, we're talking 35 in San Antonio with the potential of being a little bit colder. So that's something we're going to watch uh, as the days progress and we get more info on this cold front. Keep in mind, the cold front hasn't even developed yet. 48 in the morning tomorrow, 64 at noon, 70 for the high temperature. That's 65 Comfort, 72 Floresville, and 70 even. <laughs> in divine with that cold front unfortunately just a slight chance of rain we're talking a 10 to 20 percent chance and that's mainly east of san antonio coming up at six we'll talk more about the wind that's going to be howling with that front oh that always makes it interesting can you feel it tonight's the night
You think? Oh, yeah. I, it's happening. It's in the air. Ursula's way more confident than I am. Come on. Well, they're going up against the team that has the best record in the NBA, but <laughs> sometimes that's just how sports are. It's unpredictable. Back in action tonight, the Spurs are in Minneapolis. It's a 6.30 tip-off against the Timberwolves. Kelvin Johnson says he expects a good outing from his team tonight. Plus, the Houston Texans finally know what quarterback they'll be facing this weekend as the Jets announced Zach Wilson will be stepping back in. This SA Salute holiday greeting is brought to you by Blue Skies in Texas. Happy holidays to all the seasoned citizens in the San Antonio area. We are the Seasoned Souls, a walking and running group of Blue Skies of Texas. Happy holidays to everyone. Happy Holidays! Tonight, when the San Antonio Spurs take on the Minnesota Timberwolves, it'll be a matchup between one of the worst defenses in the league against one of the best. The Spurs are allowing 123.9 points per game, which ranks 28th in the NBA. Meanwhile, there is no team that holds opponents to a lower field goal percentage than Minnesota. Per the latest injury report, San Antonio will be at full strength and the T-Wolves are without their top defender in Jaden McDaniels and their superstar shooting guard Anthony Edwards is playing after being listed as a game time decision. You know, they're playing some of the best basketball. They're one of the best teams in the West. Um, if not the best team playing right now in the West. Um, so, you know, it's going to be a, it's gonna be a great game. Uh, you know, we had a great week of practice. Um, you know, we, we got up and down a little bit, got to compete, uh, get after each other. So, um, I, I think that's going to definitely carry over to the game. So, I think uh, we should have a good out in the night. This game tips off in about an hour nationally televised on ESPN. The Spurs looking to end their 14 game losing streak in Minnesota can achieve their best 17 game stretch ever with a win. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Zach Wilson will be starting at quarterback for the Jets when the Houston Texans visit New York on Sunday. Wilson was benched for two games, which saw Trevor Simeon and Tim Boyle under center at different points in that stretch. The Texans just earned their seventh win of the season in a game against Denver where Houston's pass defense stole the show. And after Jacksonville's Monday night football loss, the AFC South is very much up for grabs with five games left. I think it's amazing the, the games we've been able to win um, down, especially in the stretch um, of those four quarter games. And that kind of just shows how tough of a team we can be and who we are. Uh, we're resilient um, and we're going to keep proving that. Well, coming up and in sports at six, Larry Ramirez goes one on one with UTSA Director of Athletics. Lisa Campos will hear her insight on the department's approach when it comes to players leaving for new opportunities through the NCAA transfer portal. Of course, the latest being Trey Moore of the football program. She's done a great job building that department, though. That's for sure. Yes, I agree. Yeah, thanks, Mary. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5 with us. World News is next. We'll see you right back here at 6 o'clock.